please don't let bedwetting or enuresis ruin the very morale and the prospects of a young child between 6 to 15 years. Children between 6 to 15 years deserve control of bladder, which has been taught to them by their parents, especially their mother, in the daytime. So a child in that age group from 3 to 6 years learns the daily activities of being able to hold urine in the daytime, reach the washroom and pass urine there. While you're training him on this in conscious hours, in the subconscious and unconscious hours when the child is deep asleep, which it deserves to regenerate and repair himself every night, there is a possibility that the brain and the bladder rhythm has not improved yet. The improvement of the brain and bladder rhythm to come to a solidified level where you have a control at night or the nocturnal continence mechanism is dependent on many factors. One of the factors which may still be a situation not completely improved will lead a child to bedwetting. A child may be bedwetting again and again at night and that bedwetting could be even once twice a day or night or once twice a week. And this could ruin very much the effectiveness of the child in terms of his morale. He gets up at, uh, in the morning completely bed wet or he gets up wet and therefore has to rush through the washroom. And imagine the children are now gradually growing. Maybe six to ten years children may not be so motivated and the parents are more anxious and worried and looking and seeking help. But imagine those children who are adolescent between 11 to 15, 16 years and they are bedwetting. They seek help. They are looking forward to. And if they don't get a chance, which may not happen in many of the cities around, it is a possibility that these children will have a lower morale, lower performance. When I speak to teachers and parents on this subject of bedwetting, I understand an awareness on this is missing. Parents think that this is a gradual recovery, like everything is improving, this also will improve, but not necessarily in everybody. And therefore, a bedwetting awareness in children, in schools, with parents is almost a requirement now, because if you don't do it today, tomorrow doesn't become so easy. Imagine if somebody has progressed with bedwetting all his life and is now 15, 17, 20 years old has to go to a hostel to probably study or maybe 20, 25 years old and probably about to get married and live in a different situation altogether. Won't be keen to travel. The morale will be so low and so much of confidence lost because they don't know what happens when they go to sleep at night. I mean, you and I are also not in control at night, but it sometimes can get difficult. Difficult for those children because they have always been enuretics or bedwetting. So friends, bedwetting is treatable. Is that we never put our head and heart into it. We never got into depth of this. And unless we get into depth of it, we really can't treat. Imagine children are busy drinking cola and milk all night, late in the night. The dinner is happening very late in the night. If that is the kind of discipline which will happen, the bedwetting will happen because the urine will come out through that situation only. Many a times, the entire mechanism of um, hormones, which is gradually recovering, the bladder's activity, all those things have playing a very um, intricate part in not letting this aspect to repair and heal. So on one side, while we push parents into a behavioral therapy, into a therapy where we look at curtailing nighttime water intake, we look at uh, the confidence being built up, an alarm therapy or a therapy where one of the parents will have to make the child wake up an hour or two after going to sleep. And that's a kind of regimen which a discipline will come into a family of children who are bedwetting. Children could be anything between 6 to 15 years and even beyond because they've probably got neglected or missed out. We got to look into the next aspect, which is, not that behavioral therapy will improve and cure everybody. And therefore, both bedwetting and nocturia deserve a pharmacotherapy or a therapy which would bring about and ingrain the system into a discipline on care. And that kind of a pharmacotherapy is available today. At the bedwetting clinic in the Department of Urology at the Kokila and Dhirubhai Ambani Hospital, we aim that people be aware of this, number one. They could walk in and probably tell that we want to see the urologist who does the job on this. And all of us in this team are geared to look at bedwetting as a complete phenomenon. At the bedwetting clinic at the Kokilabin Hospital and Department of Urology, over the last six years, children between six years to 20 years have come in around and got dry. Unfortunately, they were wet. They were leading a life where they would be bedwetting once a week or even twice at night. They would be bedwetting on multiple occasions. Either they were primary enuretics, were always bedwetting since their childhood, or they were children who were absolutely dry and suddenly started bedwetting at school or bedwetting probably when they changed the school or changed the, the city and something which actually came up. So there's a lot of history taking, probably hand-holding the journey with parents. And therefore, attempting this uh, entire awareness drive to teachers, to parents, to schools, and to the entire society, to bring about a, a national approach on this where we could help children grow better, perform better, and probably do better in bedwetting is a very important need of the hour. Something which we miss out uh, because it's so much a quality of life and we hardly know what happens between the thighs and under the undergarments in the night when people sleep. And this is 
such a costly mess something which nobody would discuss us and imagine that parent and imagine that child whose child is now grown grown up to the age of 15 to 25 years and is still is bedwetting they continue seeking for help and remember we already gone deep into the jungle the journey has got so deep and ingrained and probably the entire cycle to be changed around takes a huge amount of challenge on my head so when i see these parents who come in at the age of children having 15 20 25 years of age and they said that they have been bedwetting all life the questions are about ignorance questions are about neglect questions are about a therapy which is not take complete care of you all so i think it's important for us to wake up to this phenomenon bedwetting is treatable bedwetting is curable and probably anybody who's bedwetting adults children adolescents they need to seek help in time and probably the therapy has to be effective once it's effective and we induce you into a program we manage you then probably go into maintenance dose with a deescalate and then probably cure you it is so much neglected i think the awareness on this is missing completely i always look at uh, parents and teachers combining together when we go to the school outreach programs and speak on this and we did speak in the national school programs around it actually feels good that at the kokelaben hospital in the department of urology we have done wonders to many children and their morale and probably the journey suddenly got punctuated the nights became drier and the days become more stronger because now they can perform better they feel better i think life moves on completely when you have got dry nights and good mornings thank you